Um, the reading this morning is John chapter 17 and verses 20 to 26. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you've loved me before the creation of the world. Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you, and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. Let's pray. Father, as we um, come to your word, um, will you truly open up our hearts and minds through the power of your spirit so that we would understand what your word is saying, understand the depths of Jesus' prayer, understand your very heartbeat and that we might respond in faith and obedience. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I hope you've enjoyed the time just reflecting on Jesus' prayer. I know I've been uh, deeply challenged by chapter 17 and the prayer Jesus prays. And I think for me it's been, it's been because I know what's about to follow. Um, uh, and so I'm listening in carefully to Jesus' prayer and kind of working out What's Jesus' heartbeat? What's he passionate about? What's driving him? Um, because Jesus is on death row. And uh, it doesn't take him by surprise. He knows he's on death row. He knows what's about to happen to him. He's been telling the disciples in the discourse all along about what's going to happen now. And here we are, as Jesus finishes this prayer... Jesus is arrested in the next 24 hours. There's a trial, and he's crucified and hung on a cross. And so that's been kind of profound for me, and I'm so thankful to the gospel writers that they remembered this and they recorded it. And you and I, thousands of years later, get this wonderful opportunity to have this insight into the mind of Christ. And here's what Jesus has been praying about. Let me remind you, just three things. He prays for himself. That sounds really egotistical, doesn't it? He prays for himself. He prays for the apostles. And then he prays for all believers that will follow. Those are the kind of three things, uh, the three groups he prays for. But it's interesting to observe when he prays for himself what he's asking for. He's asking for unity between the Father and himself. That, that's his purpose, that's his drive, that's his kind of passion. That, Father, you and I would be one. That, Father, we'd be on the same page. That, Father, please glorify me as I glorify you. Please may the world see your glory in me. That's Jesus' heartbeat when he prays for himself. He's saying, uh, you and I are one, Father. We are of one mind, one spirit. We are on the same page. And then, of course, Jesus in saying to the Father, glorify me so that I might glorify you. 
what he's actually talking about when he's making reference to the glory of God is that he desires to do his Father's will. Nothing matters to Jesus more than to do his Father's will. It's actually quite profound when you think about it that this man who represents all of humanity, Jesus, the perfect man who came and lived among us, that this man's one desire is to do his heavenly Father's will. And he knows as he does that, it's that that will ultimately bring glory to God. It's a great example for all human beings made in the image of God. That our heart's desire should be to bring God glory. The second thing he prays for uh, in the second half of John chapter 17 is he prays specifically for the apostles. And he prays for their unity. That these men that have been chosen by Jesus, handpicked, actually Jesus says, I didn't pick them. God, you gave them to me. Jesus says, God, you actually chose them. And so these hand-picked men are chosen specifically for a task. And the task is to be unified in bringing about the knowledge of Jesus and the knowledge of the glory of God. That's their message. Their message is all about communicating Jesus to the world so that the world might see through Jesus who God is and not only who God is, but God's heartbeat. That God loves all humanity. And his desire is to restore all of humanity to himself. And so when Jesus prays for the apostles, he asks God to keep them unified together in mind and purpose. And particularly when they face opposition. And so his prayer is for protection, unity and protection. Protect these apostles. Protect them from what or from who? Protect them from the world who will despise them, who will reject them, who will hate the message they bring. Protect them from the world and protect them from the evil one. Protect them from the spiritual forces at work in our world. That's his prayer for the apostles. For what purpose? So that the world might know that you sent me. So that the world might believe that you sent me. So that the world might know your love for them. That's the purpose. And so as we come to these few verses, it, it's no mistake that Jesus kind of repeats himself again. And he repeats it to all believers. So if you're not that concerned about Jesus' prayer for himself to the Heavenly Father, and if you're not concerned about Jesus' prayer for uh, the 12 apostle, apostles 2,000 years ago, then at least be concerned for Jesus' prayer and listen in to what he has to say to his heavenly Father about all the believers that will follow. And here's what he says. My prayer is not only for them alone, that is the apostles. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. That all of them may be one father just as you are in me and I am in you that's what he prays there's a lot that gets said about Christian unity and how God's desire is for Christian unity that all Christians around the world should stand together in, as one and unity is the most important thing. 
Don't break fellowship with one another. But that's not what Jesus is saying. In the context of John chapter 17, what Jesus is saying over and over and over again is this. Father, you and I are one. Do you think that's a unifying force in our world? Father, you and I are one. Do you think it was a unifying force in first century Judaism? Father, you and I are one. Philip, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And then Jesus profoundly says, there is no other way to the Father but by me. Do you see how divisive that is in a secular society, in a secular world, and a world full of religions? That's the unity Jesus calls for. That we might be one in our minds and understanding of just who Jesus is and what it is he's come to do. Because that's his prayer, isn't it? May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. Here's the purpose statement. Father, keep them unified. Keep them in one as we are one, right? So that the world, keep them on message, so that the world might believe that you sent me. That God the Heavenly Father sent Jesus. Nobody else. Jesus. Before Jesus, God had spoken in many ways through many different people. But in this final day, he has spoken to us in his son, Jesus Christ, and him alone. When you and I are unified in that way, when you and I accept the truth that Jesus has come from the Father, and he and the Father are one, and Jesus has come for a particular purpose, and we communicate that together, the world will know that God sent Jesus. They will believe it and know. And that's his prayer. He goes on then to say that they share in the glory of Jesus. Jesus prays not only that they will be one, unified, but that believers, you and I, will share in God's glory. As the Son brings glory to the Father, and as the Father brings glory to the Son, so the Son brings glory to us, and we will bring glory to Jesus and to the Father. How? By our message. When we tell the world that there is one God and one Lord Jesus Christ, Savior, when we take that message to the world, though we might face opposition and persecution, that is the message that brings God glory. Why? Because the world will believe that God sent Jesus. The world will know that God sent Jesus. And thirdly, the world will know that God loves them because God sent Jesus. There's a lot been said about love in our day and age. And that we should keep the unity out of love 
for one another and love for God because God is love, right? Here is the depiction of the love of God. That's what the love of God looks like. And don't ever get it wrong. In our history, too many of us at times have focused on the judgment of God that is poured upon the Son on the cross. And so all we speak about is the justice of God. And we are right to speak about the justice of God. We are right to speak about our God is just and he will not let the guilty go unpunished. It is completely appropriate for us to speak of God in that way. Because if God is not just, I don't want to continue living in this world. And I have no desire to meet him one day because I need justice in my life. Don't you? And don't you need justice from me? But that's not all who God is. At the cross, we see a God of mercy. He is just and he is merciful. And at the cross, we see that displayed perfectly, that Jesus takes upon himself the wrath of God and the judgment we deserve as human beings. And God, in his kindness and mercy, offers us peace with him through the cross. In this day and age, we have forgotten about justice. And the only thing we speak about is love and mercy. But that is not a true reflection of who God is. That does not bring God glory. We must present God for who he is. He is just and merciful. And we see it operating perfectly at the cross. And that's what Jesus is praying. That's what Jesus is praying for all believers. That they would be unified that they would be committed to the glory of God, that they would present to the world a true reflection of the purpose, the character, the mission, the mind of God. And it's displayed beautifully in Jesus, perfectly in Jesus. And so when you and I talk about Jesus to the world, we are expressing the glory of God. We are revealing the glory of God. Do you know Jesus' final prayer in this section for his disciples is that God in his kindness would bring all believers into the presence of Jesus so that they can see his glory. So they can see Jesus and his glory that he had from the very beginning. Jesus and God, one, one mindset, one purpose, one mission. And that all believers will be taken up into heaven and experience the glory of Jesus. And that's our hope, isn't it? But it's not a hope with no sense of purpose or belief. Why? Because God raised Jesus from the dead. 
And because God rose, raised Jesus from the dead, we have this assurance that we too will be raised from the dead and be present with God and his Son and the Holy Spirit in glory, bringing glory to God. When Jesus prays for himself, when he prays for the apostles, and when he prays for all believers, which includes us, yes, seated today, he prays for unity, that we would be united in pursuing the glory of God. And as we do that, that we would be prepared to accept the struggle and the persecution and the suffering that might come with it and ask for God's protection as we do that. But as we do it, we will be on an eternal mission. As we talk about Jesus, we will present people with believing in God, knowing God, and experiencing the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's our mission. That's what you and I are united in. That and that alone. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you were so taken by your Father's glory, Jesus, that you were willing to do your Father's will. even though it meant going to the cross. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your son's faithfulness. We thank you that he was willing to bear my sin. I thank you that he was willing to bear the sins of all the world. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for drawing us back into a relationship with you. Please strengthen us for the mission that lies ahead. Please protect us and sustain us. And thank you for this wonderful promise that at our life's end, we will be reunited with your Son in glory. We thank you for that promise in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to stand and sing together our final song. Let's do that.